And welcome back. Just kidding. So, I like to ask guests on the Haskell cast about their road to Haskell, how they discovered it. And I thought, well, maybe you'd be interested in hearing my own personal story about that. So to do that, we need to rewind to the year 2001. And at the time, I was writing a lot of C++ and I was obsessed with video game development. Uh, when I wasn't writing code, I was thinking about code, or I was on IRC talking about code. And in 2001, a site launched called Top Coder, and they ran competitions where you could win some money. I think it was something like $300. So my friends and I from uh, the IRC channel I frequented decided to enter. And the options were writing your code in C++ and Java. They had some architecture for evaluating uh, the answers. And it was an algorithm-based test. And I did pretty horribly. I, I don't remember what my rank was, but it definitely wasn't in the top three. So there was no prize money for me. Uh, I've, I've historically been very bad uh, with algorithms, especially being tested on the spot. But one of the guys from the IRC channel not only won the competition, but he did so in something like half the time of most of the competitors. And so we were all asking him questions. We were really excited for him and wanted to know, you know what it was like and instantly had more respect for the guy. And he said something that stuck with me. He said, you know, if I could have written it in Haskell, I could have done it in even less time. And I thought, right, I have to find out what this Haskell thing is. So I took a look around the web a little bit and came across Haskell and came across a comparison of Quicksort in C and in Haskell. And the difference was amazing. The Haskell version uh, was something like two or three lines of code. And the way it was written was just uh, intuitive and beautiful compared to the C. Now, it's, it's not a perfect comparison uh, because of the differences in performance and so on, but at the time I was amazed and I thought, you know, this is uh, the evolution of programming right here. I have to learn this. So I got involved with it a little bit, but found I had a problem being productive in it. And so I kind of let Haskell fall off to the side and continued with C++ for a while. But I got fed up with C++, so I switched to Ruby for a little while, played with that. I uh, came across Paul Graham's essay on Lisp, one of the essays, probably read all of his essays, and thought, okay, well, Lisp is this magic language. It's even older, and it's secret technology. And so for a while, I was obsessed with Lisp. That, that happens to be the point at which I switched over to Emacs, just to use uh, the Slime IDE and I've stuck with it ever since, but anyway. And then, as I was writing Lisp, which I even managed to deploy uh, in a professional setting one time, I feel really bad for whoever inherited the code. It was a, like a common Lisp XML RPC server or something like that. As I was writing some Lisp, I remember coming across the, I think at the time it was called the Computer Language Shootout. Uh, I think now it's called the, the Computer Language Benchmark Game or something like that to emphasize you really shouldn't pay too much attention to the results. But at the time, uh, I was obsessed with speed, especially for game development. And I saw that OCaml was outperforming a lot of languages. Uh, in a lot of the uh, the tests, and not only that, but it was a functional programming language too, which which I was still really interested in. I'd had some exposure to functional programming, you know, a, a little bit in Ruby with blocks and so on, uh, and then in Lisp as well. So I played around with OCaml for a while, and thought, you know, I I really haven't given Haskell a good try, and it's, it's so elegant. I respect that guy. I still remember what he said after winning that competition. So I thought, you know, I need, I need to figure this out. I need to come back to Haskell and really figure it out and, and stop avoiding it uh, in the name of productivity in a language I'm already familiar with. So 
At the time, the company I was working for had been acquired, so I was looking for another job, and I came across a position that was posted along with a code exercise, a challenge. And the exercise said on it that you could submit it in any language. And I thought, oh really, any language, right? Well, let's, let's test them. I'll write this in Haskell. And if the company actually evaluates it and wants to hire me, well then it sounds like an interesting group of guys to work with. So the problem was some optimization problem. I think it was basically a shortest path problem. Uh, that Dijkstra had written some algorithm for, and that was the solution they were looking for. But I had seen just recently a post on building a, a power set in Haskell uh, really succinctly with a list, uh, list comprehension. And I thought, okay, well, this, this will fit the problem. I can just brute force it. You know, it, the, the examples they gave weren't, weren't that large. So I wrote it in Haskell and submitted it, ended up getting offered a position and took it. And I found out later that they actually hadn't even compiled the code to make sure it was correct. Someone had looked at it and just kind of said, whatever, you know, we don't want to learn Haskell to, to read this. So at that point, unfortunately, the job wasn't in Haskell. It was a job for web development in PHP, which there was a lot of them at the time. But I didn't want to give up on learning Haskell. so. I decided to take on a project uh, working nights and weekends to build something significant in Haskell, which really I think for learning anything, any programming language, or, or learning programming to begin with, uh, is the only way to really learn and understand it. You know, you can, I think it's useful to have a book or, or a number of books or resources that are kind of uh, you know, that have a roadmap of what you really need to know about in the language, but to really learn, you've got to use it. So I picked up a project I had worked on when I was sort of new to programming. I'd written it in Perl. It was a language learning system with a web interface. And I thought, well, this is something I've wanted to pick up. It's an excuse to uh, build this project in Haskell. And at the time, I didn't know of any large websites that were written in Haskell, or at least the back end written in Haskell. Uh, but some libraries were starting to emerge and some frameworks in Haskell. I think uh, Habstack, which was called something different at that point, maybe Habs or uh, something else, two of them emerged. I, I don't remember the details too well. Uh, so I looked at the frameworks and thought, mm, I don't really like having to use their uh, persistence, uh, built-in persistence, because it's single server. And I had been used to working uh, for large websites with multiple clusters of databases and so on, and I thought, this isn't going to scale, which is another lesson you'll learn that you should, probably shouldn't worry too much about scaling beyond one server. If you get to that point, you probably have bigger problems than switching from, you know, uh, one persistence library to uh, a more robust uh, relational database but at the time I thought okay I'll just pick out the libraries that I need so there was a Haskell wiki post about building an application monad out of CGI monad and uh, reader and state something like that reader and writer and I didn't understand monads at all but I managed to get it working without really understanding it and for a few months probably more than a few months, I worked on this project and put in a lot of hours and then wrote an article about it and submitted it to uh, one of the Haskell mailing lists while I also launched the site publicly. And I thought, you know, this is really exciting. This is the first non-Haskell, non-academic site I can think of that, that's written in Haskell. And I'll make the source code available. It was literate Haskell at the time. And I remember waking up the next morning and my article had gotten onto the front page of the programming Reddit. Uh, back then there was no Haskell subreddit that I was aware of. And I was ecstatic, uh, not just because this was the first uh, publication that I'd gotten a lot of circulation on, but because looking at the numbers, there were something like 2,000 or 5,000 views, I can't remember looking at the numbers and thinking, wow, there's actually 2,000 or 5,000 people who are interested 
in web application development with Haskell. Maybe there's a future for this. Because I wasn't sure at the time. I, I really didn't know if Haskell was just too academic and too unproven. So I continued with that for a while. And then, uh, let's say a year or two ago, I came across a video on YouTube taking apart some code written by Notch, the creator of um, Minecraft, who entered a 4K JavaScript competition. And uh, this guy had uploaded a video of him walking through the code and explaining what it did. And it was very popular. It got something like 20,000 or 30,000 views on the first day up. And I thought, well, this is really cool. This is something uh, that, that I'd be interested in doing. And more than that, I was a little bit concerned that, you know, aspiring or new developers were looking at this code and thinking, you know, that obfuscated JavaScript like this was, was really something to learn from. I, it, you know, you can learn some things from it, but it's probably not going to give you the best uh, style or be really um, elegant code to look at. So after a few months of that being in the back of my mind, I had some time available and thought, okay, well, I, I'd like to actually build uh, a video series of deconstructing some code, and not just any code, not just, you know, code from academic papers, but real living, working code out in the wild that has the, you know, accumulated knowledge of the years of development that the developers behind it presumably have. And I started by taking apart Pandoc. And the response to that was so positive that I continued for a while. And then I moved on to another Haskell series and then started uh, the Haskell cast with uh, Rain Hendricks. And at, that's, I guess that's caught up to current day where I'm now working professionally with Haskell and I'm seeing more and more companies that are hiring. And I think this is a really excited, uh, exciting time to be involved with Haskell. And if you've been putting it off till now, uh, you, should, you should really try it out. And then uh, someday I'll be watching you describe your story of how you got into Haskell. Thanks for watching.